backpacking mistakes, people using their gear wrong. Something I've seen in many videos. I've seen it on trail in person. Now, if you're one of these people, I'm not trying to hurt your feelings. You know, it's it's just that I care and making videos on YouTube makes me mo <laughs> Seriously though, I just think there's some value in what I have to say today. Oh, hey there. I almost didn't see you. I bet you almost didn't see me in my subtle sun hoodie. A lot of people doing research on, you know, what they should wear. They see all these epic people hiking out west in their sun hoodies and it's just like, oh, that's that's what you wear. You, you get a sun hoodie. Sun hoodies have their place. When I hike out west, lots of sunlight and exposure, low humidity. It's good to keep that sun off of you and you can always stay cool. Out where I live here on the east side of the United States, it's humid as also, you can tell on this local trail that I'm hiking right now, not a lot of exposure out here. I'm in Ohio. If you're in the eastern part of the country, uh, maybe the southern part of the country, high humidity. I do not think these are the way to go. Now, this is long disputed whether uh, long sleeves actually keep you cooler, you know, keeping the sun off of your skin. If there's tons of exposure, low humidity, sun hoodies are great. When I'm in Ohio, you I bet I, you can't find one video of me wearing a sun hoodie out here. Like today, super humid, I am dying out here. There's not really any exposure right now. I don't need to be covered, even if I was in the sun. It's too humid out here to warrant wearing a sun hoodie. You know, you do you, but you won't catch me in one of those things on a day like this. That was a hot segment. Okay, this one, I've been literally wanting to do this for years. Number, what are we on, two? This is the Du Sawyer filter bags actually suck test. Everybody says it. Everybody in my videos tell me, oh, go get an Evernew bag or get a Canuck bag. I, I think it's user error, okay? This is just welded plastic. It's not like there's that much of a difference between other bags. I can tell you with all the years I've been backpacking, I've never broken a bag. And even if I did, I upgrade these like every couple of years, so I'm always getting new bags. I've never seen one broke on trail. I've seen other brands of bags actually pop on trail. When I'm filtering water, I just put a little bit of pressure on the bag. I'll, I'll roll it like this, and you just you give, it, give it some solid good pressure but nothing crazy. You're not squeezing the life out of it. Now, the way that we're gonna test this today, which is what I've been wanting to do for years, is I'm gonna squeeze the living out of this, and we're gonna see if I can't get it to pop like everybody says they do. Now, this is a little bit of an unfair test. Number, I mean, number one, I'm, I hope I can pop it right now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it some. This is the little 16 ouncer. It came with one of my first like Sawyer mini filters I bought. So this is old. The lamination's all peeling off the front here, but it really doesn't look like it's, it's hurt the integrity of the bag at all. It's still, all the seams or the welds are still good. But I think that you can pop any bag. I, I don't think these are junk. Like I said, I have several of them that I use. All right, here we go. Come on. Wow. All I can say is that was insanely fast. I just filtered 16 ounces of water. I've never filtered water that irresponsibly before in my life. I can see now why people pop these. First observation, it does get a lot better flow when you squeeze harder. So now I understand why people squeeze more and they get more flow and they give it a little bit too much and eventually pop it. I guess I just filter water a little bit slower. Now, how much time are you actually losing? I just, I don't know, I just don't give it that much. But every other bag in the world will pop as well if you squeeze it too hard. So don't be in a hurry. Enjoy the relaxation, enjoy your break from hiking. Be easy on your water bag. Pop this, then you have to use one of your clean uh, bottles to filter through. And I know a lot of other people have already ditched the bag and just go with uh, like a smart water bottle because the threads are the same. And that works pretty good. Then, see that's the problem when you squeeze these, then they're all deformed. And I imagine if you're doing like one liter bottles, multiple ones, you're constantly having to let go, fix it, then squeeze it again. I I've seen it. I actually went backpacking with a guy. It was first time backpacking ever. And he read that the Sawyer bags were terrible. So as I'm filtering my water nonstop all day with this and fine, he's struggling with a bottle, squeezing it and then taking it off and fixing it and squeezing more out of it. And, and as we're a bag, just one go all the way down, you get every drop of water out of that bag. But that's, you know, user preference. Like if you want to use these, that's perfectly fine, probably more reliable, or you can just be safer and not squeeze the shit out of your bag. All right, I'm popping this thing. <laughs> Weak! That's 
insane how fast that goes. This thing will not pop. This bag is 10 years old. I can tell you that right now. Um, I used it on a lot of backpacking trips before I realized carrying a 16 ounce bag was worthless. Yeah, it's, it's not new, so. This is actually scary because it's showing me how fast I can actually filter water. I hope I don't get cocky with it and bust one of these bags in the future. There it was. Oh yeah. That's all she wrote. So what's the moral of the story? Sawyer bag sunk. Get a Canuck. Get a Canuck. Dude, I get so many comments on that, it's not even funny. They're good bags, I've used them before. I will say the one thing about the Canuck and the Evernew that I don't like. You gotta pretty much dip your whole hand in the water. The, with these, I just use a scoop, and I suppose you could probably scoop method with those too. Yeah, you probably probably could, I don't know. My hands get super cold, and my hands and feet, it's just something I deal with. I cannot keep them warm, so getting them wet in the winter is something I really, really try to avoid doing. So your filter bags suck! Next up is trekking poles. Now, I see this all the time. I mean, most of the people using trekking poles are doing this, and it's just something that I put a lot of research into years ago, so now it's like I, I always use a certain technique while using these. So this is a Gosserma Gear LT5. I only have one because I, uh, I broke the other one. Not related to what I'm gonna talk about, though. I wedged it in a rock and fell and just smacked myself with the strap. But let me show you what I'm talking about here. All right, a little trekking pole 101 here. So basically, you should always have them entering the ground at your feet. This is what I see when I see people hiking. They're hiking with their pole, they put it out in front of them, just kind of la-dee-da, having a good hike. That's wrong. And the reason why that's wrong is because whenever you put your pole down like that, your weight is pushing into the ground and you're like pivoting over the pole. Uh, you could really just snap it right in the middle. As I'm hiking here, what I should be doing is I go alternate feet most of the time. It just feels normal. I put it in beside me at like almost like a 45 degree angle or a front frontward facing angle. When I push off from that pole, I'm pushing off at an angle that is straight with the pole. I'm not pushing forward or like pulling back. Pushing forward with the pole angle and then I lift it off. So my pulls are literally always at this weird angle. That's for longevity so you don't break them. A lot of people think that they have no value on flat ground and they're only for hills and, and descents. But even going forward on flat ground, I am always propelling myself forward with these. Completely flat ground, I'm pushing forward, and it's not, not like a ton, I'm not really like using all upper body, but saving just a little bit of uh, legs. Uh, at least it, it might just make me feel like I am. It might not do a whole lot at all. If you're kind of landing it in front of you like this, you're essentially stopping your momentum because you're digging into the ground. One more thing to add while I'm on the topic is the strap here. Now, I don't use the straps ever. Most of the time I take them off. I don't know why I haven't taken this one off yet. Um, I used to use straps and few tumbles, few things here and there, and then about ripping my hands off of my wrist, I don't stick my hands through there anymore. Plus, I feel like it's, it's less chance of getting a blister or an abrasion around my wrist. I actually always grab the pole down low here too, and I'm always kind of moving my hand around to prevent blisters. I found that just grabbing real low in the cork here works really good and doesn't ever uh, blister my fingers or anything. But there is a correct way to put your hand through the strap. Now, I haven't used straps in like six years. So you can put your hand through down through the top and hold, or you can stick your hand up through the bottom and hold that way. I don't remember which way is true. So I'm gonna put it up on screen right now. Putting your hand in, is that the right way? From the top? Or putting your hand in through the bottom? I feel like top. I, I, I think it's top. That way it slides off your hand. If you have your hand up through it, when your pull drops, it takes the pull and your hand and you off the cliff. The next one's a doozy. Stirred up a little bit by the hate comments. All right, so the next one are steaks. <sighs> steaks are pretty simple, but you can use them wrong. When you're putting a steak in, let's say this is my tent, you wanna make sure you have an angle this way so that if the wind or anything catches your tarp or your tent pulling it, it's gotta pull the stake through the ground to then pull out. Put it in out at the, ro the wrong angle, it'll just pull right out when the wind catches that. That's kind of a given, but what I really wanted to talk about, where are they at? I don't even have any in here. That's okay. 
I don't need to have them. I'm just going to talk about them. Titanium shepherd hook steaks. They're really tiny. You get them on Amazon. I don't know, like a 10, 15 bucks, something like that. They're cheap, super thin, like toothpick thin, very, very lightweight. Everybody rags on them because they bend. Well, here's the thing. You can bend any steak when you put it in with your foot. It doesn't matter if it's like one of these groundhog style steaks. Uh, you can bend any steak when you're trying to shove it into a rock. Some soils are tougher. There might be a lot more sediment or rocks and, and stuff, and it might take a little bit extra. I mean, I've used my foot here and there to help it, but it's always very easy. I'm kind of feeling the ground. That's something I see a lot is people just bending their steaks when they really don't need to. And even the titanium shepherd hook steaks, I can't remember one time when I had bent one of those things. Um, there's There might've been times when there was clearly a rock like everywhere, like it would not go in the ground, but probably no steak would go into ground like that. People rag on them because they bend. Yeah, they bend, they're, they're thin. Like you can bend them very easily, but you can also bend them back very easily. When it comes to the beefier steaks, like the Big Agnes, like I-beam ones and the MSR Groundhogs, when you bend those, it's gonna take some work to get that thing back to shape. I mean, I'm sure you can do it with, with some like maybe pliers and a vise. You, you might get some burrs on it. You might, it might uh, ding it up a little bit. The shepherd hooks go back to shape easy. No harm, no foul. Uh, the bigger steaks, yeah, they'll they'll go into some harder ground. There's definite, definite time and place for those for instance i think like sand if, it, if the soil is very very loose shepherd hooks don't have a lot of surface area where if it's going to pull forward those aren't going to work great in sand i'll tell you that right now definitely would use something with more surface areas shepherd hook steaks get or the titanium ones they get a bad rap i like them they're cheap they weigh nothing never had a problem with them in my area and even if you're putting them in with your foot you just got to be careful try all the places what the best spot is and if you can't get it maybe don't risk bending any steak and just put some put some rocks on it if you guys are getting any type of value from this make sure you leave me a comment down below let me know and subscribe to the channel uh, to check out other tip videos. I got a bunch like this one right here. Tips you won't find on YouTube. I know I'm gonna wanna talk about more gear that I see people using wrong, but that's gonna be the end of this video. So till next time, thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you on the next one.